The Alta oil rig is the first creation that I went through most of the build on my YouTube channel and it is finally out. So come along as we do a walkthrough of the final product, showcase it, explain how it works and uh, then you guys can enjoy it. So let's go. It is finally complete. Thank you so much to everyone who's watched the series and is anticipating the release of the Alta oil rig, AKA the Alta land-based oil platform, because that's exactly what this thing is. It's not just an oil rig. There's living quarters and all sorts of stuff. So let's go and explore. So on the outside, as you can see, there's a tall tower with a catwalk. We have our oil um, drilling process here. We have this um, retrieval clamp system, as well as a main clamp system. We have a ro the rod wall, which is this one. And then of course we have the swivel, we have this connector, and we have the actual, um, well, the rotary table, sorry. The rotary table, the clamp, uh, clamping system and the swivel with the jack pump there's two reservoirs on either side or two reservoir towers so on the right hand side are reservoirs one and two and as you can see now they're empty they only hold either diesel on the bottom or jet fuel on the top as you can see there's zero right now but you can pump them out and the front of this one which you kind of see through here what's inside, but holds only crude oil. And of course you could pump that out as well. Now on the other side are two storage tanks or storage vessels. So we have number four back here and three in the front and it'll tell us whatever's in here. So right now they're all empty, but they'll be there. This, this uh, retrieval system is to pick up additional clamps if we, if we receive any or if we drop one of these. Now it is a manually inserted system. I know there's been people saying like, yeah, we can do it automatically. Yes, you can. But I wanted a clean setup with all the rods kind of close together. And I kind of like, I mean, automation, you, you don't have that. You just press a button and it goes. Whereas this is more of like a worker based platform. And that was sort of the intention. Now in the middle of other than these things, we have our slurry filters and then we have this large uh, reservoir in the center that holds both our water and our slurry as you can see it's full so this is the slurry side and then the water side is over here you can't see inside the water side but it is there and you have a fire hose system that i added after or added more recently so if you have a fire anywhere on the platform you can plug in here and try to salvage the vessel or try salvage the oil rig the oil rig my pardon me so here we have our slurry pumps and you can close them if you want to not have the full system running and then if we walk make our way up this catwalk there's even a welder if you need to fix something we have two other catwalks that we could access from here either this one that takes us to the catwalk that's right over top of the slurry filter and here you could ga gain access to these valve, these uh, automatic valves and the pump and stuff if you have to fix something. And then back here, you can see inside the jet fuel vessel. Now back here, and also if you guys haven't been watching my videos in the industry, vessel is just another name for a reservoir. So these are vessels that contain the different um, types of fluid. Now we're making our way up this large, nice catwalk. So we're midway up and we see that there's this little table here with some equipment and a fire station. Now these are scattered throughout the facility. If you press this, it initiates a light system and an alarm that is everywhere. There's multiple of these lights and everyone will know that there's an emergency. 
there is a main shut off inside the, the building there. So if you have a friend or someone that's not supposed to trigger it, trigger it. You can actually, no, you don't have to go searching all the stations to find the one that activated it. You can just uh, disable it from the main control center. Now, since we're almost at the top, I'll show you the top. Okay, here we are. There's another fire station. There's a little desk as well for repairing things. And you have quite a view from here. We're pretty high up. You see over the whole facility. And the pa the reason why we have this catwalk running up is because here you have the tracks that the pipe jack can actually make its way. So if it gets stuck anywhere along this line, you can actually find it on this um, catwalk and access it. So we're going to make our way down now. Okay, we're down. And we'll just go down these stairs and we're back on the main level here. So that's m pretty much the whole extent of this uh, this floor. Obviously, like I said, you can dump the slurry and you can pump it out if you need to. Just doesn't have an automatic pump. This way you can add or um, use a pump truck to pump it out. But if you need to add water or slurry, you could right here. Now, the actual building. So on this side, we have the medical bay. Not much changed from the video, but I'm still going to showcase the whole base. And here's our battery room. Just a battery and a bunch of microcontrollers if you got to repair something. There is uh, no generator at this time. I may add a generator, but we're going under the assumption that the facility is um, fully connected to the power grid. Meaning this facility is being serviced by the power grid and it doesn't require... Uh, charging up but before this release i may actually put one of my generators if i'm feeling up for it anyway medical bay and then over here we have our um weld shop so there's a welder there's a bunch of welders on the wall this is actually a um hand cranked welder that you can fire up and it uses its own battery or it uses its own generator to uh make it work I may add it to connect it to the grid anyways, but regardless, that's here. You got some clamps, you got some um, drill presses. Over here is just the way down, and here is kind of like a little overhang structure for the building above. Now the main, there's two accesses in the building. There's one right here, and there's one on this side. This is kind of the main entrance, so we're going to take this one, and now you're in the main control center. So this is the control center for the actual rig itself and for the drilling process. So we have some equipment here, radios you gotta grab, all the breakers are here. There's a heating system, here you can turn on the tower spotlights and they, they shine up and light up this whole platform if you're working at night. You have the alarm here, including the, the reset button, so that's what we just showed. So regardless of where you put, turn on the alarm anywhere throughout the facility, this button will turn it off. And you can also lock all entrances here in case there's some type of uh, threat or attack. Here we have our armory, as again as well, if we're uh, being threatened or attacked. Just some weapons and uh, armor vest. So obviously this is not... Uh, terrorist organization they're not a you know a w wartime entity they're not an army but in case there's pirates or some type of uh, unsavory people coming to attack there's a bit of weaponry now that's this room here we're going to get back to the controls over here we have our main control center for the actual pumping vessels so this is where you get to distribute the uh, fluid into the different reservoirs as well as a radio station, radio system, sorry, that I put here. And here you control the main distillation process. And actually, I will go through this because then we can get the rig pumping and I'll show you some of the other stuff. So, we have a rod positioning system. That's the first station here. This chair also moves, so you can stay seated. You don't have to get up if you don't want. Now, the rod positioning system has two positions, either the wellhead position which is above the wellhead or the rod wall position which is right here 
you can move that rod wall to position the uh, clamp to pick up one of these rods. So that's what this is. And you can move it forward towards you. That makes it much easier to pick up. Now the way to pick it up is you just align it like this, turn on the clamping system, and then have a crew member or laborer or whatever come down here. You see that the clamp is active. You drag this and just put it in there. So that's what I was saying. Sometimes people want an automatic system for the clamp to pick it, pick up the uh, rod, but I actually do prefer kind of a manual system. And now we do have a rod already in place, so I don't want to... Oh, or we don't. No, it shows that we do. Nope, never mind. Drill depth is zero. So we definitely... I'm going to have to restart this. Uh, restart this and I'll show you then how that works. But in theory... Actually, this is a good opportunity for us to put this uh, to put this rod into here, and I'll show you that works. So we send that up, and then once it's high enough, we stop that, and then we press the wellhead position button, and it drags this thing in here, and right there. And now when it's there, we have the uh, it's right al it's aligned right above this clamp one and if we lower it just make sure it is moving down nope also you have to sometimes jiggle the whole th like system up and down if it's not working right away the reason for that is just um a glitch of the game like it's not if it's not reacting to this move clamp like see now it's not working let's just jiggle the thing up and down and there we go it's going so that was just something i found in the game and there, now we've clamped it into the bottom um, wellhead itself. So once you have that in place, you can send this one back. Oh, we've got to release that clamp first. My bad. So the clamp actually did not help us at all. I had this clamp on. You have to turn this off if you want to send this back. Which makes sense. Now again, this thing glitched and our thing is our uh, rod is gone I'm not sure why but regardless to do the next step you take the next rod so you position this to the next rod turn on the clamp pick it up into there drag it over to this and make sure they're aligned right over that clamp area or call it joiner area yeah rod joiner so you put it there and then you can join them right here and they'll say when they're joined and from this you can then Turn on your slurry pumps, your water pumps, and even your pump jack mechanism here. If you can see, it's moving up there. And you'll turn on your cl different clamps for the different systems. Here you power up your rotary table. And that's all spinning. And if you'd have a rod in there, it would be drilling, you know. But regardless, I will restart this structure and I'll show you how that works. The structure is respawned, but I will use this opportunity to bring to you and to interrupt your regularly scheduled broadcast and tell you that I will release the site truck with uh, the flag on the roof and this uh, semi truck with the flatbed and a uh, tanker option so you can use all Alta vehicles for this Alta rig and I hope you guys enjoy that anyway now we're back we see that there is a rod in place from my save game file Actually, one thing that I did not mention and that in earlier is this system doesn't just turn on the alarms. It actually cuts off anything that's going on. So let's say we sent, we're moving something like this. That will actually stop whatever is going on. It turns off these breakers. So everything here you can see is zero. And then it keeps going once the power is restored. So just, uh, that is an emergency shutoff. It shuts the whole site down. If the drills are going, it'll stop. If whatever's happening, it'll be, it'll fully stop. Okay, so let's pretend we, let's come back to where we were. So we joined our clamps, or we joined our rods. We clamped them together. We sent them down. They're at a depth of 112 meters. And now, I mean, we're, we're obviously, as you're going, you're obviously using the pump jack mechanism to tell you whether or not, um, you've hit the well but let's first enable the swivel clamp enable the rotary table clamp so that's these ones so that's clamped and 
that's clamped and now it's telling us that we've reached our wellhead because we have and now our pressure is almost there so once we start pumping you're going to watch your pressure so there we have it we're pumping but you and you don't need your slurry and your water pumps anymore because that's only when you're digging like that's just to dig the actual um to to, to bore the rod down into the ground but now that we're not boring anything we're not using our rotary table we don't even need these we just need the wellhead pump or the uh, pump jack so we're pumping now here you don't know how much you've pumped like once you reach this you this room is now not going to be your main center of attention but rather this room so if we sit on this chair that has a nice swivel function we can actually see that our crude oil is increasing so we're pumping crude oil into reservoir one which is the one right there now say we want to distill it you turn this one and then you can watch the crude oil temperature reach 300 once it's reached 300 it's going to start distilling and then you have these ones start to fill so let's try that and we'll leave it for the time being while i explain the rest of the uh facility and then i'll show you and this is all not being used right now we need to have some diesel or jet fuel or otherwise you pump the raw crude oil into these reservoirs so we still could pump the raw crude oil if we select reservoir three crude oil and begin pumping you see that now it's pumping into reservoir three but once this temperature reaches 300 this is going to stop because we no longer have crude oil now we have the diesel and the jet fuel in this uh vessel so this will stop but anyways that's fine we can reset this we'll cancel the fluid and we'll wait for ourselves to get some diesel or jet and then we'll pump that into reservoir four but regardless this is going on like i said you have a radio it has a megaphone and it has a radio like a megaphone and speakers throughout the place so you can uh, communicate to your people on site here there is a little um clipboard that has your armory code so make sure you read these important messages if you're on site now second floor of the camp building is a conference room and over here you kind of make big big meeting decisions and stuff there's six people that work on this site so you'll see the six bedrooms on the next floor but here you got a pool table a little dining living area presumably you eat over there here's a little kitchenette and then you make your way to the third floor. You've got a nice, beautiful mountain painting. When you're lo feeling too hot from the desert, you could look at your mountain. You've got a little seating area. Over here is the crew quarters or crew bunk room. Now everyone gets to charge their gear in these these ones, and they have Arctic gear because there's no PPE otherwise. Like on uh, in this game, there's no protective. Uh, hard hat type stuff and I guess other than the fireman equipment so we could all wear that maybe the fireman would be better now down here on in this room it's under the bed and you still have individual lights so the bedrooms always have lights if you want to go to bed you can turn them off now this is the suite for the big oil man and they also have the thermal gear under the bed yeah, I might replace it with the uh, fire protection stuff we'll see because normally um, sight gear is fire retardant anyways so it's not uh, gonna catch on fire up here we have the top floor which is a little patio area with the hot tub and helipad now over here you can turn on your helipad lights and there's a spotlight over there that can illuminate the helipad there's a barbecue here and when you're up here, it has these nice mood lights. So when you're sitting in the hot tub and relaxing after a long, hard day, you're not um, in the dark. And you could hopefully ignore the rest of this and enjoy your hot tub. So that's here. This helicopter takes up, can take off. You can fly around the place. Obviously, be smart if you're up here. You don't want to jump off unless you want to, you know, hurt yourself. So we make our way down. And um, that's pretty much the facility other than this. So now we see that we have a bunch of diesel, so we can swivel ourselves over here. And uh, now this is step one. 
select which reservoir. I'm going to turn this off. It's a little annoying. So I'm going to select which reservoir to pump. So we already have something in three, meaning if we now choose three, you're going to start mixing your crude and your diesel. And that's going to be not good for anyone because the whole purpose of the tanks is for them to be separated. I mean, you're free to, if you want to mess it up, you can, but then you'll have a hard time extracting it again. But we're going to select reservoir four. So there we have it. This is selected and we'll say, let's pump our diesel. Now the process, it doesn't begin until you spin this and there we go. Now it's diesel and it's filling. And if we go to the reservoirs themselves, this one will tell us this one is crude oil. So if you want to pump it out, it's crude oil and the back one is diesel. So if you want to pump it out, that's diesel. Now when the level reaches zero, this will reset. So you can now pump in jet fuel afterwards if you want or whatever. But for now, they are with those things and that's kind of what it is. So I hope you enjoyed the uh, video. Let's see how this looks. I mean, it still looks a little bit too much like fire equipment gear. I'd prefer if it was like blue or something, but it is kind of like PPE. Usually the uh, site equipment is like either orange or blue and they're, f they're all fireproof like uh, suits. So technically, I mean, the closest thing is the firefighting gear. We'll see anyway. And if I add a gener uh, generator somewhere, I'll make it connected to the diesel tank. So you could pump, make your own fuel that can then uh, power your generator up. But regardless, um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you enjoy the creation. I'm so excited to release it to you. It's been a long time. I mean, not, a, not that long, not like the Cochrane or something, but it's been in the making for some time. And I know you guys are very excited to try it out. So let me know in the comments what you guys think when you start using it. And uh, happy Stormworksing.